Help support Name Explain by leaving a like and a comment, sharing this video, and by subscribing to the channel. The letters of the English alphabet are split into two categories, consonants and vowels. The majority of them are consonants, with there being a much smaller selection of those all-important vowels. What dictates if a letter sound is a consonant or vowel is how that sound is produced by our mouths. Consonants are defined by the fact that to make their sound, you have to close your mouth. Take the sound the letter B makes. B. You have to actively close your mouth to make that sound. Hence why B is a consonant. The etymology of the word consonant unto itself is that it comes from the Latin consonatum, which means something along the lines of to sound together. This is because initially it was believed that consonant sounds could only be produced when attached to a vowel. This is why if you look at a lot of Latin words, you won't find huge strings of consonants next to each other in words all that often. So if consonant sounds are defined by the fact you make them by closing your mouth, then I'm sure you can figure out what defines vowel sounds. Vowels are the sounds that we make in language that don't require us to close our mouth. Once again, think about how you make the sound the letter O makes, or. To make this sound, we do not have to close our mouth at all, so it's defined as a vowel. Vowel as a word has its origins in the Latin term of letella vocalis, which means vocal letters, which ties into the etymology of consonant as already mentioned. These two kinds of letters work in tandem to create the words used in our language. Consonants do most of the heavy lifting, giving our words their basic structure and foundation. And then vowels give these words definition and help create flow from consonants consonant to consonant. I like to see consonants as a chain of islands, beautiful but isolated from one another, and then the vowels are like bridges that bring them all together. Silly metaphor aside, vowels and consonants are one of the things we are taught about in regards to language from a pretty early age, especially when it comes to being taught what letters are vowels and what letters are consonants. So how many vowels are there? Well, most of us will quite confidently say that in English there are five vowels, those being A, E, I, O, and U. In reality, it's a tad more confusing than that. There are actually other letters in the alphabet that can also be considered vowels, with some more so than others. Also, the five letters of A, E, I, O, and U, which I'll be referring to as the traditional vowels in this video, are technically multiple vowels unto themselves. This is because vowels aren't actually letters. Vowels are sounds. As mentioned, a vowel is defined by being a sound made in language that requires little to no mouth movement. That's all a vowel is, and the letters that we refer to as vowels are simply the visual representation of those vowel sounds. The letter A is not a vowel, but the sound that this symbol is designated as meaning, ah, is a vowel. The traditional five vowel letters of A, E, I, O, and U all represent the most commonly heard vowel sounds in the English language, but these five letters represent way more than just five vowel sounds. Listen to the sound the letter A makes in the word of cake, compared to the sound it makes in the word of cat. They are pretty different, meaning that the letter of A alone symbolizes at least two different vowel sounds. So now we understand that these five letters alone can represent a few different vowel sounds. How many vowels are there? Well, that is a bit trickier to give a definitive answer to. Spoken language is nowhere near as uniform as written language. Vowel sounds can vary from place to place, from accent to accent. I've seen estimates that put the number of vowel sounds in English from 14 to upwards of 20. For this video, I'm going to say there are 15 vowel sounds. This is because I'm going to be using pronunciation.com as my reference point, as they have a great page talking about different vowel sounds. So while I'm saying this, this definitely is not a definitive answer on the matter. What I enjoy about their definition is that they break down vowel sounds into three pretty to easy to understand categories. These categories being long vowels, short vowels, and other vowels. Long vowels are when one of those five traditional vowels make a sound akin to the name of the letter. The aforementioned A in cake is a long vowel, for example. As in cake, we say the sound of A like the name of the letter A. This is called a long A. There's of course also long E's, I's, O's, and U's too. Examples of these include sheep, mic, own, and shoot, respectively. You can hear in all these words, the vowels make a sound like the name of their letter. We then have short vowels. This is when the five traditional vowels make the sounds they are most linked with. Cat, as we used earlier, is an example of that, where the letter A makes the 
a sound. This is a short A. We can hear a short E in med, a short I in pit, a short O in hop, and a short U in run. The third category, called the other vowels, are just a collection of other unique vowel sounds that don't fall into a pattern like long or short vowels. This includes the alternative sound the letter U makes in words like put, the longer O sound in words like soon, the OI sound in words like join, the OR sound in words like dog, and the OW sound in words like down. So going down this route, we can see that there are 15 vowels, as opposed to just the five we are taught at school. You may have noticed that the last couple of those vowels, when represented with letters of the alphabet, contain the letter W in them, which is a letter outside of the traditional five vowels. This brings us neatly into the realm of letters that are sometimes considered vowels. As mentioned up top, in their broadest sense, vowels can be defined as sounds in language that don't require you to fully close your mouth. And there's actually a handful of other letters in the English alphabet which make sounds that don't require you to fully close your mouth. The one we saw in those other vowel sounds was the letter W. Think about the sound this letter is traditionally seen as making, wa. To make this sound with our mouth, we do not need to close our mouth fully, hence why it can be seen as a vowel. While W is seen as a potential vowel, the letter Y is seen as a potential vowel even more so. The sound link with the letter Y, Y, also doesn't require you to fully close your mouth. Unlike W, Y is more commonly seen as taking the spot of vowels in multiple words in English. Take the words of rhythm and gypsy. In these cases, the Y is serving as the vowel slash vowels of those words. This is why W and Y are known collectively as semi-vowels. Though unlike Y, I don't think there's any words in English that use W as their sole vowel. Welsh is a completely different story, however. In Welsh, W and Y are not seen as semi-vowels, but full-on vowels, meaning Welsh has seven letters that represent vowel sounds, as opposed to English's five. This means that Welsh does have words which use a W as their sole vowel, like the word quum, which means valley. Let's get back to English, however, as there's more than just W and Y, which are seen as potential vowels. The letters of L and R are also seen by some as being vowels too. L is vowel-like because the sound it makes, L, doesn't actually require you to close your mouth. Likewise, the sound R makes, R, can be made with just about not closing your mouth too. Along with W and Y, the four letters of L, R, W, and Y are referred to as approximates. Approximants are defined in language terms as sounds where you have to move one part of your mouth, whether that be your lips or tongue, but not fully close the mouth itself. This is why we can't consider many of these full vowels, because while you don't have to fully close your mouth to make the sounds of these letters, you still have to make some mouth movement, whether that be things like moving your tongue or narrowing your vocal tract. With the five traditional vowels, you don't really have to do anything like that. With these five, you just open your mouth, change its shape slightly, and you're good to go. No tongue movement or vocal narrowing necessary. This is a key reason as to why they are not seen as full-blown vowels. Another reason being patterning. Patterning in phonology relates to the order in which we see letters repeat in words, aka their patterns. That's explaining it way too simply. But if you look at most words, you will notice that they have a pattern of consonants at the start and end, with vowels dotted in the middle. I mean, it's not every word ever, but I'm sure you can understand what I mean. We don't really use letters like L, R, W, or Y all that often in the same locations in words that we use traditional vowels. There are some cases like cry and try, and I have to give a special shout out to rye, a word formed solely out of approximants. Then we have the letter H. H is a really weird one. The sound is most likened with huh is made without closing your mouth at all. In fact, this sound requires minimal effort. The huh sound is basically just the sound we make from breathing out of our mouths. In some ways, it requires less from us in regards to pronunciation than pronouncing some of the traditional five vowel sounds. In many cases, the sound is nearly silent in words it features in, like in ours. H has all the qualities of a vowel, so why isn't it one then? Well, once again, it comes back to those aforementioned language patterns that phonology deals with. We don't really use H in the same way we use other vowels, like it isn't used to smooth out two consonant sounds, or to bridge a gap between them. This is why it isn't considered a vowel, despite the fact it's pronounced exactly like one. For the record, the study of 
sounds in language is called phonetics. And from a phonetical perspective, H is indeed a vowel. This puts H in a really odd spot where phonetically it is a vowel, but phonologically it's a consonant. It's also worth mentioning that this video has primarily been focusing on the English language. The amount of vowels in languages can differ from language to language. Hindi, in example, has 11 vowels. Mandarin has just 6 vowels and Polish has 9 vowels. Apparently, the language with the most vowels is the Tar language, native to the nations of Botswana and Namibia. Wikipedia says it has 31 different vowel sounds, impressive to say the least. And as for the language with the least vowels, that award apparently goes to the Obiak language, which is now extinct, though was spoken in the Caucasus region. It's believed to have just had two vowel sounds. So, suffice to say, the answer to the question of how many vowels there are isn't as clear-cut as simply listing off the letters of A, E, I, O, and U. Name Explained depends on viewers like yourself supporting the channel financially on Patreon. So a huge thank you to everyone who does. Donating just $1 a month helps the channel amazingly and gets you bonuses including ad-free videos, exclusive content, the power to request ideas to be made into actual Name Explained videos, and your name at the end of the video with all these awesome people. Visit patreon.com forward slash Name Explained or click the link down below to find out how you too can support the channel. Thank you. Thanks for reaching the end of the video. Why not watch another and subscribe to keep up to date on all things Name Explain? You can find myself on Instagram where I'm Name Explain YT and join the Facebook group Friends of Name Explain to talk with myself and other name nerds. All that will be linked down below. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and once again, thank you all so much.